Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on changing the subject of a formula with a square root. So we've got these three different equations here, each involving a square root, and we want to make x a subject. That means to get x on its own on one side of the equation. And remember my advice for this is to undo the last thing done to the subject. I'll explain what I mean by that. That just means we think of the story of what's happened to the subject and undo those things in chronological order. So let's think about what's happening to x. It was first divided by y, and then that whole thing we square rooted. And the order is absolutely critical. The last thing we did was to do that big square root. So that's the first thing we undo. We undo the last thing done first. So we want to undo that square root. And we do that by doing the opposite to each side of the equation. So if we were to undo the square root, the opposite of square root is squaring. So we therefore square both sides of the equation. Remember, whatever we do to the left-hand side of the equation, we have to do the same to the right. So I'm just going to put blob squared to mean I want to square each side. So if the a gets squared, that becomes a squared. And if we square the right-hand side of the equation, it get undoes, it gets rid of that square root, leaving x over y. So now we've dealt with the square root and we can just deal with the rest of it in the way we usually would. Let's think about the story of what's happened to x. It's been divided by y. So we undo that last thing, the divide by y. What's the opposite of divide by y? Times by y. So we times both sides of the equation by y. That a squared gets times by y. So a squared y. Noting the squared is on the a, it's not around the whole thing. And also remember we put these things in alphabetical order. So it should be a squared y not y a squared, because a alphabetically comes before y. And then if we times the right-hand side by y, that gets rid of the over y, just leaving x. And that's the final answer. And we could write x equals a squared y if you prefer the x to be on the left-hand side of the equation, but it doesn't really matter. OK, next one. Um, let's think about what's happening to x. It was times by 3, then it was subtracted from 1, and then we square root of the whole thing. The last thing that happened there was the square root, so we undo that first by squaring both sides. We do the opposite. So the b gets squared to give b squared, and squaring the right-hand side gets rid of that square root, leaving the 1 minus 3x. Now, this is a bit complicated here because the x is in a negative term being subtracted from something. Now, what some students like to do is they like to think of this as minus 3x plus 1, and they subtract 1 from both sides of the equation first, and then they would divide by the minus 3. I prefer the x to be on the side where it's positive. So, I don't like the x being in a negative term, so I'm going to add 3x to both sides of the equation because we want the x to be on the side where it's positive. So, that gives you b squared plus 3x. And adding the 3x here gets rid of the minus 3x, leaving 1. And now, well, look, x has been multiplied by 3. Then we're adding b squared. So I'm going to minus b squared from both sides to get rid of the plus b squared. That gets rid of the plus b squared, leaving just 3x. And we get 1 minus b squared. Now, what's the last thing? x has been multiplied by 3. We want to undo the times by 3 by dividing by 3. And then... Dividing by 3 gets rid of the times by 3, leaving x. And dividing this by 3 puts the whole thing over 3. So we get that, and that's the final answer. By the way, I tend to go from this step to this step in one go. So I call this the swapsy trick. And what the swapsy trick is to say, well, if 8 minus 6 is equal to 2, what can you swap there? Well, we can swap the 6 and the 2. And clearly, 8 minus 2 is 6 is also true. So you can swap the thing you're subtracting and the result of the subtraction, the thing on the other side of the equation. So similarly here, we can swap the thing we're subtracting, the 3x, and the thing on the other side of the equation. So that then becomes 3x equals 1 minus b squared, which is exactly what we've got here. So you can do that in one step if you, if you like, but you could also do it the long way. What about this last one? So let's think about what's happening to x as being square rooted, then times by b, then we added a to it. That doesn't mean a times this, it means a plus this. These two things are being added together. So we subtract the a to get rid of that plus a. So we get c minus a on the left, and the minus a gets rid of that plus a here leaving b root x. Now let's think about the story of what's happening to the subject x. It's being square rooted, 
then it was times by b. So we want to get rid of that times by b by dividing both sides by b. So the c minus a all gets put over b. Dividing by b gets rid of that times by b here, leaving root x. Now, x is being square rooted. We want to get rid of that square root. We do that by squaring both sides, the opposite of square rooting. So the left-hand side, it's this whole fraction squared. And I'm going to use brackets around that fraction to make it super clear that when I do this squared, it means the whole fraction squared. If I didn't have that bracket, it might look like just the a is squared or just the numerator squared. By having the bracket around the whole fraction, it's clear it's the whole fraction squared. And the right-hand side, the squared cancels out the square root, leaving just x. And that's the final answer.